Hey guys, Karak Sifty here with another review. This time I'll be taking a look at the RM05 Archaea Kong Loader from Choso Kinkei Gyro Zetter. This is the fifth in the Rapid Morphin series and is the Gyro Zetter of the fourth chosen driver, Michinori Hane. So, like with the Xenon Gildas yesterday, everything included here is built into the car mode. So, we'll take a look at the Kong Loader. This one really diverges from the past releases in that it's not a normal sized sports car, rather it's a rather kind of a heavy duty off-road vehicle similar to a Land Rover. And so we've got this big bulky chassis on top of these four big wheels that give it a little bit of lift. And see that's mostly in orange with a little bit of gray. And despite being in orange, they decide to give it dark blue windows, which is an interesting contrast. Once again, you have mold in windshield wipers. Looking at the front, we have the front bumper with the front grille and the headlights, as well as the Arkea logo. On the sides, you can see the windows, mold in door lines, and the handles. On the back, we have a little spoiler here, the extra wheel, a couple of tail lights. And on top, it even has a kind of a canopy window. Now, this is also basically the biggest of the Rabbit Wolverine series car modes. Though, it, that gets a little bit weird, though that makes it a little bit weird once you get to robot mode. And another kind of weird thing, and something that's not that great about, is that, unlike with the others, because it's got a rather lifted chassis. You can see bits of the robot mode hanging down from side, front, and back angles. But that's not too much of a problem if you're just rolling around on a surface like this. So to transform it, the first thing we're going to do is actually this has a much different transformation than the others. So the first thing we're going to do is instead of taking off the top part, which will come later, we're actually going to remove these side panels and on each side one wheel will come off. We'll set these aside for now but they'll come back into play later. Next, you take the remaining wheels and fold them out to the side like this getting them out of the way. Next, take the top section from the back Unpeg it there, pull this down, then unpeg this right here, like so. Next you're going to take these, fold in the knees here, and bring around the legs, just like so. Fold up the head here. Then take these two sections, fold up all these panels so that none of them are in the way, and then peg them together like so. Then finally, take off the two wheels on the arms, and you know, as you can see, we've got a couple of pegs down here, so flip it around and reattach them like that. And so there you have Arkea Kong Loader in robot mode. So here's where I said it get. Here's why I meant by it gets kind of weird. Despite being the biggest car mode of the series, this is the shortest, most squat of the robot modes. Because you've basically taken that big bulk of the chassis and just com compacted it down here. Although in this case, that means it, it doesn't cheat for the chest, as this is the actual front grille of the car mode. Though, that being said, this kind of robot mode makes sense considering its naming, as Kong is 
generally something that's derived from King Kong, so it has kind of a gorilla-like stature to it. With these short squat legs and big bulky arms. We got the head here, which is an interesting design. As this kind of armor plate, this kind of armored mouth plate, and a couple of strange ears or antenna. A little bit of yellow up here on the top. And then a couple of blue eyes. You can see the arms, which have some silver and gray detailing. And the legs, which are these very simple parts with what look to be the door handles and then these flat feet. Articulation wise, it's the most limited out of any of them. You can rotate the head, full 360. You can rotate the arms a little bit, though the panels that stuck in between can't get in the way. But you can also rotate it at the bicep, like so. Bends at the elbow. And has a ball joint wrist. No waist articulation. Legs go forward and back. Barely go out in a little bit. Have a knee bend, but that's because of the transformation. And then there's an ankle tilt, and the ankle and the foot can swivel side to side. Now, accessory wise, it doesn't have any included weapons, as this is meant to be more of a brawler than a weapon user. But what you can do is you can take the remaining pieces. And then you're going to want to fold out this piece here. Then, just taking a closer look, you'll see that there's an L and an R on the inside, and then these pieces are marked with an L and an R. So you just match them up on whatever side they go to. Just like so. Then fold in these pieces to create a shield. And so then you can take it, fold up one of the arms, rotate the fist, and then slide it in. Well, this is a very, well, this is a very sturdy looking and big shield. The problem is it's hard, it's hard to get to really pose with it. And that's because the ball joint comes off easily, and it's not a very tight ball joint. So unless you're balancing part of it on the ground, he's not going to be able to hold it straight very often. And, like I said, you're more likely to pull off the hand, and basically you're more likely, more likely to pull off the hand with the shield holding it than to pull out the shield. And it's honestly weird to see it to have a shield but no other weapon. And because of this limited articulation, there isn't much play value to it. The shield isn't much good. And it doesn't have that much posability. You can't really get in many good poses. And a lot of the problem comes from, you know, the way these pieces are compacted and how you have these side pieces. Well, it is pretty nice that you can have these panels just kind of fold to be somewhat flush with the shoulders. You do kind of have to work it a little bit to move the shoulders around. You just have to kind of move it around these pieces. And you can't really move the arms back or forward very much. And the leg articulation is just pathetic. There's no rotation joints. It can go forward and back and bend at the knee, but it's not of much use. And there really isn't much use for these rotation, these swivel joints at the feet because, I mean, I guess you can get it in a flat foot stance. You can't really do dynamic poses with this.
So as far as this goes, it's very difficult to recommend the Archaea Congloader. It has a transformation that really is a bit more complicated than the others, and kind of goes against the whole concept of the Rapid Morphin series. It also, uh, you know, sacrifices articulation and play value for being accurate, but even then, I think that, with, as far as the show goes, this might be a case of mass shifting as this is shorter than any of the others, but in the show it's supposed to be big and bulky to show that it's strong. So, with that being said, I can't recommend it. And unfortunately, this is probably the end of my Gyro's Zero reviews. Within the Rabbit Morphin series, there are six. I skipped the second because I didn't have an interest in it. And I'm not, most likely not going to be getting the sixth because I don't really have an interest in that too. Now, there was supposed to be a seventh and eighth. Number seven was supposed to be the Archaea Liburd Shining Edition, which is supposed to be an upgrade for the Liburd. And the eighth was supposed to be Nissan Fairlady Z, a strong replacement for the Nissan GTR. Unfortunately, while those while listings for them had been posted on import sites like Hobby Link Japan, apparently the toys got cancelled. So I'm not going to be getting those, and I don't have any interest in the Mini Morphers series, which are you know more like. Transformers Legends, Legends class figures, where they're just these really small cars with very simple, very little, very low articulated figures. And that's unfortunate because I really wanted the Mybird SE and the Fair Lady C. Especially because from the pictures I saw, the Liburd SE seemed to kind of fix the problems with the regular Liburd and looked to have better articulation. And it, you know, it always upsets me when Bandai just out of the blue cancels upcoming releases with no real explanation because, you know, these are Bandai of Japan products and it's not the kind of stuff that you really hear much of the reason why if you're not in Japan. And even then, you know, some of the stuff just kind of happens. I don't really give an explanation for why the stuff was cancelled. So as far as the series goes, yeah, there's not much to it. My six entries in the Rabbit Morton series is not that much. And as I said with my Jarrah Commander review, what really is a shame is that none of these come with extra cards for the Gyro Commander. So these releases don't really work together with that. And there are no additional parts for it, no kind of combining or accessories. These figures are what they are. So... Yeah, I guess this is more of a stint than an ongoing thing. But I hope you guys enjoyed my Gyro's Air reviews. So, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share with my channel for more videos. And for now, this is KRX50, riding off.